to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for everybody coming to the Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, 530 meeting of the city of Sydney, the greatest city in the world. We uh, are going to uh, operate this meeting in accordance with the Public Meetings Act. On the back wall there it is posted for you to read at any time. If you want to get up in the middle of the meeting and read it, it's perfectly fine. Um, our first action tonight will be to see if there's a motion for the approval of the meeting, meeting minutes from March 26th. It do contain my phone number, 249-2321, <laughs> although it was mentioned three times. It's only in there once at the bottom, but I'm not going to complain. Yeah, motion. I'll motion. Second. <clears throat> motion by Bonnegard, second by Radcliffe. Roll call, please. Stroman. Stain. Buckner. Yes. Sherman. Yes. Radcliffe. Yes. Bonnegard. Yes. Right. Motion passes 4-0 for abstention. And now it is time for comments to the public. Anyone want to come up to talk about how their leadership Cheyenne County class is going? Anything? <laughs> 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 All right, I tried. Perfect opportunity. Um, so I guess funny. then uh, we'll just move right into uh, Tom von Sagren telling us about what a wonderful city we are. Very well. Tom Von Sagren, Sydney City Parks Superintendent and uh, Tree Board member. Uh, for the past 38 years, Sydney has been designated as a Tree City USA. Uh, one criteria to apply for Tree City USA is to have a proclamation read and signed by the mayor each year. And that uh, proclamation, I think, should be in front of you in your packets. Uh, this year, the last Friday in April, is Arbor Day in Nebraska. We will be having our annual Arbor Day celebration with the City Tree Giveaway on April 20th, so two Saturdays from now, and it'll be at the Legion Park Shelter House. Now, that's a big change from being at the youth camp where the board there so graciously hosts us every year. Uh, we didn't get a uh, reservation there in time this year, so we're going to be hosting out of the Legion Park Shelter House once again. Just a reminder on that. That's a big change. Registration will be at 7 a.m. with the program starting at 8. Uh, Chrissy Land, our uh, Western Nebraska community forester, will be our speaker. Uh, she will discuss uh, planting trees and where the best location for planting would be. Uh, with considerations for where in relation to your house or other outbuildings or electrical wires, etc. And the Arbor Day celebration poster is attached and has all the names of the trees. I can read them here after a bit. Uh, the requirements to apply for Tree City USA are to have a tree board, a community ordinance, a forestry program with an annual budget of, least, of at least $2 per capita, and an Arbor Day observance and proclamation. Tree Board is a volunteer board. Uh, uh, we have uh, the Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts help us distribute trees every year at the giveaway, and this volunteer activity earns them a patch uh, for community service. Uh, we have no cost to rent the shelter house. Uh, the actual cost of the giveaway is the purchase of the trees, and last year the trees were purchased for uh, $5,283. And I guess I want to name off the tree board members, uh, Taz Goodrich, Ryan Reisdorf, Andrew Lindzen, Steve Waller, and myself. Uh, with that, I think we're to that point of reading the proclamation. Maybe I should answer any questions first. And then we'll do the proclamation. How about that? <laughs> Is there any questions from anybody? I, ju I just checked. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked. <laughs> 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 I sure is windy and cold. <laughs> 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 
He wants to know. And yeah, we just, for our own safety and the safety of the general others, public, yes. Uh, you got any updates on that? Uh, just, just we're going by Burke's reading there. So if it's going to be warm, great. High at 53 and snow. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Uh, a list of our, our trees, uh, we have the hedge maple, uh, prairie gold aspen, redmond linden, uh, state street maple, american hornbeam, redmond linden, prairie expedition elm, canada red choke cherry, hackberry, and heritage oak. And we'll be giving away about 80 trees all together to the folks of Sydney. And there'll be a varying sizes. Those different species can get large in your yard. Or if you need a smaller one, we have, we have that accounted for. Usual? No, that's, about yeah, 80, 90 we usually give away. The years we give away pine trees, then that bumps it up to we'll do about 100 trees on when we have pine trees, it seems like. So. And they're free. That's right. That's Even right. Come that and way. you have to come, stay, and sign in, and stay for the planting demonstration. And so, uh, Chrissy Land will put that on for us. Uh, we're to that early if you want to get your tree right. Yeah, yeah. Come early. <laughs> come early to get your best chance at the tree you want. So. It's a campground, so you can like come the night before and camp out, be first in line, right? Okay, Something this is at the shelter house. Oh, that's right. Here. I wasn't. I was. I was listening. There, but there you go. They do have unwanted trees at the end, though. So if you stick around until after everybody leaves, yep, if yeah, you, 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 you get the Charlie Brown one, you do. You get to take on. Yeah, yep, the scouts get us through that pretty fast. Uh, I could read the proclamation if you would like or if you want to. I would love it if you did. That's great. great. All right, our Arbor Day proclamation. In 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. This holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. Since then, Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. Trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. Trees in our city also increase property values, enhance economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. Whereas Sydney has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation for the past 38 years and desires to continue its tree planting ways, now, therefore, I, Brad Sherman, Mayor of the City of Sydney, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2024 as Arbor Day in the City of Sydney, and I urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and to support our city's urban forestry program. And I further urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of present and future generations. Do you care to sign this I one? Okay, thank you all. <laughs> and now, in the spirit of proclamations, Amanda Easton, National Library Week. Hello, I am uh, Amanda Easton. I'm Sydney Public Library Director, and this week is National Library Week. Yesterday was Right to Read Day, and today is National Library Workers Day. 
if you follow the friends of the Sydney Public Library on Facebook, they're highlighting each of the library staff every day with a short profile and a photo. That way, if you're not sure exactly who's who, you can uh, figure that out. And if you know who's who and you just want to know more about us, you have the opportunity. So uh, since we are in proclamation mode, I would like to request that uh, Mayor Brad Sherman read a proclamation declaring National Library Week. And I'm not going to read it for him and make you do it. I'm just saying we've established a <laughs> procedure here. <laughs> for me, but if that's, that's fine if you want me to. I believe you have a copy in your packet. Um, if I would have printed my packet off prior to coming here, I would. <laughs> oh. But in, in, <laughs> in a few seconds, we'll have to All right, National Library Week 2024 proclamation. Whereas libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, allowing them to live their best life. Whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. Whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equality for access for all whereas libraries adapt the ever-changing needs of their communities continually expanding their collections services and partnerships whereas libraries play a critical role in the economic vitality of communities by providing internet and technology access literacy skills and su and support for job seekers small businesses and entrepreneurs Whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals. Whereas libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all. Whereas the libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Brad Sherman, Mayor, proclaim National Library Week April 7th through 13th, 2024. During this week, I encourage all residents to visit their library and explore the wealth of resources available. <laughs> and uh, so that's it. It's been proclaimed. You're Thank free you. to go. I just have one question uh, as a uh, informational expert. When was the last time we had uh, Tree City or Arbor Day Week, National Library Week, and a solar eclipse in the same week? Um, I don't believe that's ever happened before. This is the first time ever. A new world record. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your affirmation. I'm the next. I'm the next uh, agenda item as well. So. Well, why don't you just stay here? And that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Tell us how wonderful Marva is. <laughs> so. Um, Yes, I would like to um, recommend, uh, on behalf of the Sydney Public Library Board, recommend Marva Elwanger to be appointed to the library board. Do you have that since you didn't print your packet, or do you, do you need that one too? Um, just so you know, I did print the next one. I'm ready for that. Okay. But uh, if you wouldn't mind, tell me some more. Wonderful stuff about Marva. So, yes. Um, so, Marva Elvanger, um, as you probably know, sat on the city council. She's also been on the historic preservation board, and we think that she would be a great or a great applicant for the library board. And um, all five was a unanimous vote to um, of all current members, all four current members. It was a unanimous vote to recommend her. And is five the amount of positions you have? Five is the total. So yes. You are currently at full capacity. Uh, no, we have four, and Marva will make five. Right. Yes. After, after this is approved, we'll have five. She yes. Perfectly able to operate. Library. Do I need to read that for you? The background discussion part. I'm sorry. This is. I'm really bad at this. Do you guys want to read that? You want to just. Uh, <laughs> we can read it. Too. <laughs> well, that's what I, I mean. I don't um, want to assume that you uh, can't read the paragraph yourself. Yes, I've <laughs> tap certified all of these gentlemen before you have the ability to read and probably have read it. So we can skip over it. Okay. 
then. So we just uh, you're looking for a motion to approve Marvell when you yes. uh, put position on your library board. That is correct. So moved. All right. I'll second. It, it was uh, Radcliffe and Bombadard with the second. Roll call, please. Buckner. Yes. Sherman. Yes. Radcliffe. Yes. Bombadard. Yes. Stroman. Yes. Right. Motion passes five zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let me know. All right, David's up. So um, this is not something new. We've been talking about this since 2022 in preparation for our infrastructure sales tax uh, ballot issue. Uh, and uh, what we want to talk about, or what I want to talk about, uh, is the Northside Park. Uh, this is something that the uh, City Council has made a priority priority over and over and over again um, <clears throat> excuse me in the infrastructure sales tax election in several strategic planning sessions um, and other meetings uh, and budget sessions so uh, anyway uh, what I want to do last time the council had met in their strategic planning um, session they had asked me to uh, kind of go out and see what this process might look like, what we would need to do, how we put this together, what other funding sources there might be out there to, to couple with our own uh, to make it an even bigger and better project uh, and how that process would work. So I did. Um, and since then, I've went out, I've, I've talked to a few different places. The best granting uh, opportunity I can find is through Gaiman Park. Uh, that is an up to $600,000 match for any specific park project with a 50-50 match. Now, there are a few things they require. Um, I, I will say this. I was had a really nice conversation with the administrators of this program uh, who assured me that just being in western Nebraska would give us high points because they like to have more projects out in this area. Um, also, there's certain things, of course, that are required, uh, such as handicap accessibility and things like that, uh, which we would, we would do. That would be our own city code that would require us to do that anyway if we were going to put in any, si any new sidewalks and things like that. They also uh, give a lot of extra points for amenities, uh, such as uh, that uh, sign interpret interpretive aspects, like educational interpretive aspects, a picnic areas, and also a common like community gathering space, uh, either if it's just a big cement place or like a big awning or something like that, that would be a nice place for a community to gather and maybe do, or somebody could take their family and do a, a family reunion or, wh or whatever, or birthday or however you, whatever you would want to do in that space. So those are some things to take into consideration. Uh, what I will need, though, before we enter this process, and I'll, if the council chooses to continue to go down this path, um, I would like to bring a uh, resolution to you saying, yes, you would like to apply for these grant funds through the Game and Park. So that's what they will require for, for this grant is a resolution from the council saying, yes, we support this program and, and we want to use, use these funds. The cycle uh, is from May to September. And then, so so that'll begin very soon, uh, but we have all the way till September to make a submission. And the grant awards will be, um, the grants will be awarded in January of 2025 uh, with an April to July of 25 grant agreement. They'll award them and then it'll be a few more months and then they'll finally send out the agreements for you to sign. They'll probably do that wonderful e-signature thing that you love so much, Brad. <laughs> <I'm> almost good. <laughs> you, you got really good at the last one there. Um, so then they would probably be looking at uh, if you were going to break ground on this early 2026, the spring of 2026. That also, I know that pushes out a little bit. It does give us some time to stockpile a little more of our infrastructure sales tax to get a bigger. The more we got, the more you know we can ask for a match for. So um, anyway, that's the problem. And I just wanted to come to the council tonight and see if this is something you want me to move forward with. Uh, move forward with putting a resolution together. Move forward with applying uh, through the game and parks department for a matching grant, which is 50 to 50. And also, uh, uh, one thing we will probably want for our grant, which we have absolutely nothing right now, uh, they do not require expensive engineering designs or anything like that, uh, but they would like some kind of a design, you know. 
uh, maybe it's, it's like somebody who RDG has done for us in the past up at the corridor, putting some nice little pictures and, and renderings together for us. They would like to see something like that. So there would be an expense with that. Um, we could probably pay for that out of our park infrastructure sales tax if that's what the council wants to do. But those are the two things I want to ask. Um, uh, is this something that, I mean, clearly you've wanted to do this for a year and a half, but do you want to move forward with some uh, a small expense for some kind of a uh, renderings or drawings or a, a easy design. Now, I will say this, the, the grant, one thing I like about the grant, um, and we would do no matter what anyway, uh, but it absolutely requires public input, and we definitely want to have public input on something like this. So we'll make that, um, we will advertise that heavily when we get to that point. I don't want people to think that when we're throwing together a design that's going to have renderings on it, that this is set in stone and they've been locked out. That's not how this works. We just kind of need an initial, initial um, a design that shows that we're meeting their qualifications, what they require in their grant uh, guidelines, uh, and then there will be public input later for uh, how it really should look and uh, you know what the aesthetics and the feel of it would be. So I didn't want you to think that we were, um, by doing design, that this is like an etched in stone thing and that's where, where it ends. So, so the, the renderings are necessary for the application or at least they, they would go a long way towards Towards, you, you, it would get some points for your application if you can show what you really have a, have, have in, in mind, and that and that what you have in mind incorporates some of their some of their guidelines. So would we have the public meetings before the renderings, or uh, we would do the renderings just to submit the grant funds, but then we would have public meetings to those renderings aren't beat all. Oh, they're not engineering designs. They're just here's what. We want to do. We want to do this beautiful thing, and, and we've incorporated some of your guidelines in doing so. Um, if you so choose to give us this money, then we will go out and get a, a, a public uh, public input and do the real engineering for you know how we're going to put it together. Well, I certainly like the idea of getting an extra six hundred thousand dollars to help along with the project. So. <coughs> Yeah, hopefully we'll get the, you know, hopefully we would get the full amount. That would be great. It might cost us a little bit too. I mean, I don't know how much we'll have in our sales tax account by then, but we'll we'll look around and see what else I can do to come up with maybe another matching grant somewhere to get us there or, or whatever we need to do. I, I I know it's a priority to you guys, so. have an idea, David, of what you want it to look like? Do you want it to mirror what we have down I, south? Do I don't know. I mean, I don't, I haven't, I, I think the public and the council are probably going to have a better idea of, of that than, than, than me. I mean, I certainly think they're right. It should be accessible to everybody. And I know at one point in the very beginning, when we first started talking about this a year and a half ago, uh, we had talked about maybe even doing a crisscross sidewalk through there with some kind of gathering space in the middle where everybody could so everybody would have access to get to it if you know they wouldn't have to go on the grass or the gravel or anything to get to that space. I think that's probably a good idea, and it sounds like that's kind of what they're looking for is some kind of accessibility place that's a good gathering place for the public. So uh, even our rough things that we drew in, the, like Tom drew on a, on a napkin in our <laughs> original meeting, sounds like that's kind of what they're looking for. So I mean, I think probably. At least that kind of thing, I think, would probably be a good idea. Other f uh, amenities, I, I I don't know. I mean, probably going to depend on what the right. public would, would like to see. Would you put the pavilion in the cross sidewalk, or would you? Yeah, no, somewhere near there, you would think. Somewhere yeah. accessible, so people could get to the middle. Can get there and yeah, there. yeah, I think that'd probably be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just was wondering what you what you were thinking on it, but early stages. Yeah. yeah early stages. We've been at it for a long time, and it's going to be a long time more, I think, before we, yeah. before we get there. So, but at but, least they know it's coming. Yeah, we we yeah, you guys have been talking about this for quite some time now. So they're seeing action on it. I think that's the biggest thing is that they're seeing action on it, and it's not just you know fancy words and hey, we want to do this, we want to yeah. do this. They actually see the, the city manager uh, putting in the work and putting the plow on the ground to make sure that uh, they get what they have coming to them on that side of yeah. town. So do we need to take a vote, or you just need us to recommend that we move? I didn't really need a vote yet. I, we will need a vote when it comes down to like resolutions and, and grant applications and things like that. But right now, I didn't want to uh, go down that path if, if this wasn't what what the council wanted to continue. We will have to even even though it's only a design. Um, 
we will have to put it out to bid that way we can claim it later on the grant they are allowing you to go back on that generally with grant you can't it's only things going forward you can you can claim as an expenditure but as far as this is concerned your design you can go back and claim later on the grant so we could get 50 percent of this back but to do that it will have to be a public bid because that's what almost any grant would require you to put this out to bid so i guess i'd like to know if that's something you guys want me to put together a bid package for okay okay perfect i will bring back something that i'll probably bring that back to you whatever that bid looks like so you can actually then vote to say yes we want to put this out but before we did all that right yeah so that's all i had Thank you, David. Thank you. And Burke. <laughs> 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 he did. Part when you ask your questions, right? <laughs> Those the answers. Wrote the checks. You should probably know. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a motion to approve the claims for March. I motion. Motion by Buckner. Second. Second by Strowman. Roll call, please. Sherman. Yes. Radcliffe. Yes. Bondegard. Yes. Strowman. Yes. Buckner. Yes. All right. Motion passes five to zero to approve the budget or the uh, claims Thanks. for March. I've almost got ahead of myself with what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Hagen Carwin, the budget report. Good evening, Council. So, uh, breaking down March, um, it, it was another good month um, for all departments uh, across the board. You know, general fund is looking fine. Um, as you'll notice that I kind of broke things out a little bit differently to give you more of an in-depth um, view now that we're roughly about 50% through our fiscal year. Um, you can see how we stand on a year-to-date portion on pages two and four of my portion of the packet uh, jumping down into it our property tax did fall um, 20 grand to ly but again this is just a timing thing if we go to uh, page two on that uh, side you'll see that actually year to date um, this same time frame last year we're actually up about three thousand dollars so um, looks like everybody's paying the bills on time and and getting everything in there when we look at sales and occupation tax we're up 17k there the uh, main growth that we're seeing again is the sales tax uh, people are out and about buying things doing things um, travel is also a big play for us as people you know as our summer comes I guess and people start to travel down to Ogallala and things like that and stop in for candy bars gas so on and so forth that helps us out as well um, fees for service um, up 32k to LY um, this definitely is falling more in line with 21 22 I'm gonna assume most of this is a timing aspect uh, I didn't dig into the weeds on it the, the main growth is coming from golf course you know opening up everybody's getting their memberships um, everybody's starting to golf and, and enjoy the season there so um, dropping down into state federal and county uh, up 30 grand from LY the main reason uh, there is we, we didn't have a reimbursement from the state at this time last year um, so we saw a huge jump um, but this does fall more in line with the previous years before that so um, down to franchise admin fees we're down 216 K this one I know is a timing thing we have those submitted uh, that last week of March they'll come in this first pay for the admin fee side so we'll see that actually be a positive in April as opposed to um, being streamlined there. But then again, going into that other aspect, it, 13th Avenue building, till that is off the books, we'll, we'll continue to see that one, right? So, uh, and like I said, going down to those year to date numbers, this is just kind of looking at quick facts showing that each and every one of the uh, general fund aspects or revenue departmental aspects is up and we are performing to where we have previously uh, no big changes no big concerns or anything like that jumping into revenues and expenditures on the 
department level. Um, general fund down 41 grand, um, but each one of our other departments and pro proprietary uh, functions is has had a great month. Um, they've all done a great job and, and they make my life easy when I have to, you know, talk about how positive they are, right? So um, general fund, again, it, it, it's going to come down to those admin fees is why we're, we're seeing that little bit of a dip um, there. But as soon as we get those back in April, it, it, it'll go in line. And then as we jump into revenues and expenditures for the year to date stuff, this is the, the main idea that I wanted to get across that we're all positive. We're doing great. Uh, financially, I have no concerns with where we stand today. Each of the department heads is doing a great job managing the expenses as well as their revenues, staying on top of their work as well as uh, making sure that they have the necessary supplies to get the job done. So any questions? Well, I'm certainly no finance expert, but uh, if our sales and occupancy tax are up and fees for services are up that's uh, that's a sign the city's doing pretty good right correct that's a wonderful thing any other uh, questions comments for does that support the, the general fund at all the that, yeah sales tax yes okay yes that's the side 21 grand yeah nothing to worry about really I mean There's no more questions for Kagan. We have a motion to approve his vote. Oh, no, I, oh Paul, go ahead. I again. Please do. <laughs> 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 we've, been lot, we've been paying a lot of sales tax so, uh, out of our store. So we have a, we've seen a lot, of, a lot more traffic. Really? So, yeah. things, and are, things are going well over there, too. You're welcome. And we appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay on top of that. <laughs> out we're all doing good you're doing good Rob's doing really good need a winter discount no <laughs> <laughs> all right as they negotiate uh terms uh, I'll move. <laughs> motion, motion by bondegard to okay. approve the claims and second by stroman roll call please radcliffe yes bondegard yes stroman yes Kleffner? yes sherman yes Motion thank you. Five zero. Thank you, Kagan. And then we have oh, the city turn. manager's report. Uh, I do have a few things. I want to write, remind the council that I will be out of the office on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, I will be leaving Sunday to go to the um, uh, Innovation and Housing Expo in Lincoln. As you know, we went to this the first time we went was last year, where we teamed up with uh, Twin Cities Development and Western Nebraska Economic Development and the Panhandle. Uh, to go see if we could drum up some uh, developers for housing since there's just uh, not anything in the in the area that, that will do that uh, and everybody came back really well uh, i mean gary came back with somebody that uh, a developer to build houses so did scott's bluff and so did we uh, and they'll be getting ready to do that very soon here in prairie winds so it worked out very good for us for our first time out of the shoot uh, we went last year mostly as a vendor with our booth set up so that we could talk to the developers and try to get them interested in, in coming to the Panhandle to uh, build and develop here and, and give business to our local subcontractors. And we all wound up uh, doing a very good job at that. Uh, what we're gonna do this time is send a little bit larger conting contingent instead of just two of us going. I think there'll be about four of us because uh, we discovered last time, it was our first time we didn't know, uh, that there were some really, really good sessions uh, that we thought we should be sitting in on and so uh, we're going to take a couple extra people so that we can uh, maybe rotate and actually attend some of the sessions rather than just uh, pitching ourselves out in the hallway to possible developers but we will do that as well again so it was successful last year we want to expand expand our role a little bit in that conference this year uh, so i'll be out of town for that just wanted to let everybody know uh, also this weekend is the spring expo i won't be able to go sunday because i'll be driving to lincoln but that's going Saturday and Sunday, so everybody go out to that. There's a lot of really great vendors out there, and I hear the Steffens is giving away $5,000 of furniture. So that's that's a lot. You can, you can really redo a living room with that kind of money. So anyway, everybody should go out to that. Um, and I wanted to uh, uh, personally thank uh, 
all of our electric crews and first responders for everything they went through this weekend with the horrible winds that just tore everything apart and i think they're still out there working in some of the county areas and so thank you uh, greg to your crew and, and joe and everybody else for everything you did we appreciate it. i know you were out all night long that's 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 just a fact <laughs> you, were, you were out there all night long and and i mean i thank thank you very much for that um and also um i think sometime before may the mayor and I and another council member, I think uh, it was Burke that did it last year, need to meet with the um, Cheyenne County Community Center to talk about our contract with them where they provide uh, the programs for the, you know, softball, soccer, all that kind of thing. And, and we um, give them some, some money to do that. So uh, it, the, the way it's set up is it has to be their board president, um, the director of their activities and uh the director of the community center which is mike nema so those three uh on our side it needs to be the mayor another council member and myself so we need one volunteer other than brad who can't get off the hook he's he's stuck. already volunteered. you're already you're like, contractually obligated so i, I have a, a volunteer for brock and paul can we bring oh, good I say it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> what I, we all, oh, well honestly, yeah, we can, yeah, we, it has to be all even right. numbers. Yeah, yeah. So you can draw straws or however you want to do that. I'll huh? tell you what, after the meeting, we'll arm wrestle for it. Rochambeau. I like arm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess clearly whatever game we were, I have an influence on that. So. Okay. Yep. On darts. We'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out before okay. then. We won't prolong Yeah, because I'll probably reach out to Mike here next before the end of the week and see when we can get it scheduled. And I want right to know now we don't who have schedules I'm working might, with. So whatever date they choose might limit uh, somebody's. Yeah, you got to get six people's schedules in line. So but we didn't it didn't seem to be too difficult last year. So no, as a matter of fact, I thought they were pretty easy to get along. With. Yeah. So that's all I had. Uh, if you guys just want to let me know sometime soon who that would be, then we'll get that scheduled. That's all I had. All right. Lori is just chomping at the bit to say something. What are you going to tell us? That I don't have anything to say. <laughs> well, I misread that look. I'm good. All right. Joe? Uh, Kagan? Rough, rough, uh, rough YouTube go. Uh -oh. yeah, it, was a, it was a really nice evening. People Ratings are down. Yeah. Play with their yeah. kids in the park, the beautiful parks that we have here in Sydney. And uh, so, what did we get? Uh, Twelve. Okay. You, you, you at least that's the double digits. Yeah, that's a dozen. <laughs> Currently, there's four. Well, once so I started, people. once I started talking again, <laughs> sort of challenge the Nielsen ratings on that. I think we try. You know. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, we're there. It's a service that we provide. Not yeah. necessarily. Or it is not. Uh, what do they call that? Legally required. It is something we do just because we love our citizens and want them to see from the comfort of their own home what goes on here in the evenings. And uh, only 12 of them decided to show up. It'll get better. Yeah. They right. could be having watch parties. Probably Randy. Big fat goose egg here. That's not the right way. All right. I'll wait. Um, Amanda, anything else? Uh, did I mention that it's National Library Week. <laughs> um, Not only that, you proclaimed it. <laughs> you did proclaim it. Um, you don't necessarily have to wait for National Library Week to come in and thank the library staff. So we have a pretty, pretty nice crew of people working at the library who, who do an awful lot. So please stop by and tell them how much you appreciate it. Fantastic. Um, Tom, uh, we'll be reaching out to council to see if, if one or a few can make it to the tree giveaway, and we'll hand that councilman a Tree City USA flag to proclaim that to the community. We'll, we'll stay in touch with this, see who can make it. Right. Uh, yeah. Landfill, a big thank you to them. They came with their payloader with the grapple and. A huge spruce tree root ball hauled off for us. So Dean's crew helped us out with that after the windstorm. <coughs> uh, 
parks crew and cemetery crew burned at the golf course today, so we were the ones that smoked up the south end of town. <laughs> a big thank you to uh, Patty Jeffers family uh, for donating the playground equipment that was installed uh, late last week uh, at North Park. It's a giraffe climber, and it's for it's in memory of Patty Jeffers, the principal of North Park. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Right. Thank you, Tom. Greg? Oh, just uh, we made it through the storm. We did take some bumps and bruises. It was pretty hard hits. You're probably wondering why we still had outages when we got, you know, three quarters of our town underground. But it was all because of the overhead that we still have caused the, the underground to go out. And it caused a major problem on our south sub. That's why we were down on that one from midnight to around 1.30 or so before we got everything switched around to get everybody else back up. But rest of the time on our outages, it was um, a very north end where we're currently working on our conversion now. And that's where our, all of our problem was for the most part for the week. Uh, that fighting 80 mile an hour winds was not easy. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and uh, I, yeah, I, I clearly don't think we can say it enough, but uh, the fact that you guys are out there in probably the least safe conditions that a person should be out working with, one of the least safe <laughs> things to be touching in wind and rain. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Dean? Nothing. Brandon? I want to say thank you yeah, to all the department's heads that were working this weekend in the conditions and ready for Brad to lose the pie in the face. <laughs> There's still 200 poles that are down. For the our area. side of it, but our, yeah. our city, we're good. Yeah, um, yeah I think the wheat belt was wheat belt. close to they like got hit hard. Wheat, they wheat belt and Tri State got yeah. demolished. They had a lot. Yeah, and there's crews working all the way up through the north part of the state still. And those, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to actually see some of those poles, but they are mm. yeah, yeah, just know. astonished <laughs> that yeah. they're, they get snap, snapped in half like that. It's unbelievable. So thank you guys for doing everything you did, and all the departments for everything you guys did. So it's a brutal week. Brock, do you have anything to say? I think so. <laughs> you got some notes there, don't you? Uh, same thing, you know, great communication about the power outage. Got a message from the city manager, keeping all of us informed. Uh, he went out and supported the team. Guys and, and ladies that were out there, uh, on it right away, fighting the winds, making sure that we got power restored to those people that needed it. Uh, something we take so light and for granted until it until it happens. Uh, I want to add a boy to uh, Chief. There was an incident that made its uh, social media rounds uh, on some private property that uh, uh, he handled exemplary. Uh, some people didn't handle it so exemplary, but uh, he did what he felt was best. Uh, we worked with. Uh, David and the, city, the, the private uh, property owner and the other individual and, and we came to an agreement and we got all that uh, diffused and taken care of and uh, thank you both. I, I think this, the, the uh, property owner thanks you as well and then uh, Chief went the extra, uh, extra, the extra mile and, and, and instructed the property owner on what to do to uh, keep those individuals from uh, violating her property. I had an opportunity to go see uh, Pretty and pink at the school, always a good opportunity when, you know, uh, we as city councilmen uh, and city employees and such get out and support our, uh, our uh, students and future thespians. It was a really good play. I was surprised by it. I saw a lot of moms in there that were very entertained, and I saw a lot of fathers that was, uh, they were trying to stay awake, so that was cool. Uh, a lot of grandmas. A lot of grandmas, a lot of grandmas, so that was good. I mean, especially end of the year, so, you know, just something to keep in mind that the kids really uh, appreciate when they see, you know, high-level individuals show up for those those things and events. Uh, April is the start of all of the, the uh, road work. Uh, I would like to say to our 12 YouTubers, 
and everybody else that's going to watch this later. When you see those guys out there working, make sure you take an opportunity to to thank them. Uh, make sure you're looking out for them. Uh, make sure you're you're taking your time when you're riding past, and and you're not just flying around because they're out there fixing the streets, and and uh, doing those things that you asked us to do. Uh, a great trash race. Uh, that is uh, getting ready to go on, and I am to read this real fast. Uh -oh. I know. <laughs> uh, it says, this event is to promote environmental awareness and community involvement in cleaning up litter and trash in the public spaces. Participants form teams and race to see who can collect the most trash in a set amount of time. It's a fun and interactive way to make a positive impact on the environment. And that's being put on by uh, Keep Sydney Beautiful. Uh, everybody knows their mission. Uh, I, I think that the current team and leaders have taken that uh, that organization by the horn and has definitely made Keep Sydney Beautiful a driving force in keeping our town beautiful in more ways than one. Uh, we have the Pie in the Face, which is also a, a Keep Sydney Beautiful deal. Uh, you can go to their website and read all about that, what the funds will benefit. We have three locations in which to uh, donate. All of them were uh, utilized by our mayor this morning. Uh, <laughs> the city building, the community center, and then the new gym location. So if you have an opportunity and you want to donate, you got some spare change in your pockets, quarters, nickels, and dimes, feel free to put them in Bondegard, Stroman, Bradshaw, and... Uh, <laughs> I've never not wanted to win something so bad. So. Uh, if you win, that means you have the most money. I'll just donate it to y'all. <laughs> so uh, I like the fact that, you know, again, we're just, we're just providing opportunities for our community to come together and just have fun with, with, with their city leadership and things of that nature. Uh, the weather's changing, time to shop, like Keegan was saying, time to get out and fellowship and enjoy all the different festivals, uh, celebrate Sydney America, and uh, come out and, and shake the cobwebs out and just... Uh, enjoy where we live, why we live here, and uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, I think I got more than you, so, yeah. Oh, well, I can make this go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you need some trash Um, no, but it's on the website, and we, we can get it. Is, it's I on the Keep it's June City. 1st, isn't it? Is it June 1st? I think so. I could June be wrong. 1st. June 1st? Okay. Dean is in the uh, pie. He's the KSB representative so don't don't think it's just us if anybody feels a certain kind of way about old dean i see some yeah yeah i see some head shaking a certain kind of way about old dean here's your opportunity so yeah yeah <laughs> the loser is definitely in this room and we're not talking about whipped cream in the pan we're talking about home cooked apple pie cherry pie something uh pie that might be a little warm when you put it in the face right there you know so yeah this is the real deal but Coconut cream, <laughs> if uh, the person who has not consented, he, he should not be named. <laughs> there you go. But I mean, ultimately, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that the weather's changing. Things are about to happen. Very exciting year and season for Sydney. Uh, this is why we live here in the greatest city in America. Did I say that right? OK, I stole a line from my mayor. and. Uh, I think I'll, I think I'll put and pass to to you, boss. All right. Well, a few people have mentioned it already, but it is uh, never a bad time to thank a city employee for what they do. Um, Greg and his team uh, exemplified what uh, being a city employee is in the worst of times. They're out there uh, doing what they do, um, and it's not an exaggeration to say that they were risking their lives out there to get us power back. Um, I don't think anybody would have argued if they just waited it out, um, but uh, they didn't. They got in there and, and got his power back, and it's, again, it's it's what we do on a daily basis as uh, city employees, and I, we appreciate you guys, and uh, when you see them anywhere, anytime, please thank them. Um, let's see. Uh, and for those who haven't been paying attention, uh, no female athlete in the history of Nebraska has ever high jumped six foot. We had one go six foot, and then the next week go six one, and from all accounts, there's more left in her. 
So this is going to be amazing to watch. Um, so keep that in mind if you can uh, make a Sydney track meet or go somewhere else where Sydney's having a track meet. Uh, a lot of great athletes. Um, if you uh, befriend Donna Wiederberg, uh, she will uh, give you pictures upon pictures of the meets. Um, and uh, I saw something where Dudes is going to be featured on America's Best Restaurants the week of July 8th. I believe they were asking. So uh, clearly you can eat there whenever you want. But uh, July 8th, you might get on TV. Um, and, of course, a lot has been said about the jars. And uh, I'm all for putting money in anybody's jar, including my own, if it raises money for Keep Sydney Beautiful. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, they're having burgers at the Elks. Bingo on Thursday and Sunday breakfast. So you can spend almost all week there if you want. Um, there is also an expo on Saturday and Sunday where a lot of other uh, small businesses and stuff will be appreciating you stopping by their booths, checking things out. In another week, the Sydney Shooting Park will have their annual fundraiser, which is pretty awesome. Um, and as David said, uh, if you want to build a house in Sydney, you can go ahead and do that anytime. Um, preferably, if you know how, that would be helpful. Um, <laughs> if you have a crew that wants to put together and start a, a construction company, we'd appreciate that as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, I spent several hours over the last week or so uh, stopping in to local businesses to thank them for what they do, talk to them, um, see what's happening. A uh, lot of positive comments, a lot of happy people. I found uh, businesses that uh, didn't know about um, and um, I uh, made a Facebook post today right before I got here, and I already got comments about businesses that I didn't go into, so I promise <laughs> I will visit all of you and post pictures, and if... Uh, they never came to visit us. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to list. on the list. Figured out what it was. on the list. My, my uh, uh, responsibilities outside of <laughs> the, the mayor job uh, sometimes limit my availability. Um, but I will always call you back if I don't answer my phone at 249-2321. Um, if you have any questions about that or the businesses uh, that I visited, I was going to tell a couple stories um, about some of the businesses that I visited. Um, there's a gentleman that uh, does embroidery out of his own house and uh, would uh, is looking to possibly... Uh, be inside of a building here because it's getting out of hand. Um, some businesses, uh, Sam Wilkins is starting a uh, Wilkins Solution computer business. Um, and um, I'll, do, I'll do a better job on Facebook uh, talking about some of these places, but I just, I want. Would you say you visited about 100 uh, businesses or so? You know, there, were, there was 100. About 100? Fact, yeah, there was a, uh, uh, there was a list that I actually used. About 100, And okay. some of them I had to call because I wasn't sure. Talked to a, a lot of great people, realized that there's a lot of, and that's that's where I realized that uh, my list is 113 right now. So 113, so yeah. we exceed 100. Yeah, there's more than that. Yeah, that was a lot. Well, that's great. It is. Uh, it is that's great. It is pretty fabulous, and every business that I stopped into was uh, – Happy to see me. Some were happy to see me leave, but I created some <laughs> happiness everywhere I went. And uh, again, uh, there's just so much stuff going on. Uh, I went into five different places just today that are either expanding, remodeling, or have moved to a bigger location, um, which, I mean, obviously, it's got to be a great sign for uh, Sydney and uh, if you want to start a business <coughs> in Sydney, now's the time. If you need some extra money, walk into almost any of these businesses and they're looking for help. So if you walk into a business and they're not looking for help, I'm sorry, um, but most of them are and, and we'll find something for you to do if you need a little extra money. So with that being said, at 624, 
Oh. We are not going to adjourn the meeting. What we're going to do is we're going to go into closed session to discuss a little contract, uh, which means we have to vacate the room. Uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. A motion for this. And after yeah. the meeting, uh, there's minimal chance there will be actual any action. So if you're like writing for the newspaper or the radio and you don't want to stick around, you don't have to. You can start working on your story right now. <laughs> um, but with that said, I'm wondering. So a motion. We need a motion to go into a closed session. If we have a motion to go into closed session. So second. Radcliffe made the motion. Stroman with the second. Roll call, please. Bondegard? Yes. Stroman? Yes. Buckner? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Radcliffe? Yes. All right, motion passes 5 0 to go into closed session. Which again, thank you all for coming. But please leave quietly and safely. <laughs>